I was thinking about what Jacqueline said last night about belief and what we, what we keep and what we um, leave behind. And I was thinking it was really interesting to me that we're no longer quite fighting the battle for social entrepreneurs as entrepreneurs. And that was something we tried to do in the original article too, was really anchor social entrepreneurship in entrepreneurship. You know, Jean Baptiste and his, you know, leveraging resources to their highest and best use. That's what social entrepreneurs do. That's what entrepreneurs do. Um, Schumpeter, of course, the, cre the force of creative destruction. Again, that's equilibrium change. That's what entrepreneurs do. That's what social entrepreneurs do. But we're no longer fighting that battle. We can move on. And so the real challenge today is summoning the body of evidence that tell us what social entrepreneur is getting done in the world, what social entrepreneurship is getting done, and how it can provide real lessons and impetus for policy and for business to actually track this wave and make the better world that we all know is possible. And there's one, if, if you want, there's one, there's one more thing that, I, that at least uh, struck me as really interesting as we got into the social entrepreneurs uh, more, and that is the degree to which they have to balance a set of tensions. Uh, and, and so, and, you know, we write about it in, in the book. So the social great social entrepreneurs have to, at the same time, abhor the current equilibrium, right? Otherwise, they wouldn't be motivated to do anything. If they like the current equilibrium, they'd say, why do I want to change it? Uh, but at the same time as abhorring it, they have to appreciate it enough to understand mm -hmm. kind of why it's the way it is. And we, and we talked about uh, the wonderful Molly Melching and, and Tostan in, in it. Uh, she abhorred uh, the, the, the practice of female genital mutilation, um, but she appreciated why it happened well enough to get a handle on how, how, to, how to change it. And they have to balance the, the notion that they're an expert, but they're also an apprentice, right? So they bring some expertise to bear, otherwise they wouldn't be able to do anything particularly useful, but they also have to apprentice and really learn and understand the system they're, they're working on as if they're an apprentice. Uh, and then they have to, uh, have to be able to both experiment and commit, right? So most of the social entrepreneurs that we, that we study didn't sort of come up with the all singing, all dancing idea day one. Uh, uh, but at some point, they committed to something enough that they could really, that they could really drive it. And so I, I came away, I've come away from now studying them saying they really walk this incredibly fine line between different sides of, uh, of, the, of the tension. And so if they just are, I abhor this, I'm a super expert, and I know the answer, chances are they're not going to be a successful social entrepreneur, even though you might say that's very leaderly. You hate this terrible situation, and you're, you're really smart, and, and you're really committed to an answer, but probably it won't be an answer that drives equilibrium uh, change. If whatever system we're working on, whether it's water and sanitation, whether it's education, whether it's deforestation, if we can look at those trends and see that they're heading in the right direction, that's a high bar. And yet, that's the bar we think that social entrepreneurship has to sustain.